So, Mr. Bernard Kribije is uh, the executive director of uh, SAF Integrated Training Center, the non profit agency working with AIDS orphans and other vulnerable children all over Uganda. And uh, I have to tell you that one thing that I love about Ugandans is that they know how to talk. Right now, Uganda is a global concern to everyone in America, in Europe, in Africa itself, and even. South America and every other part of the of the world, we have the potential to be like any other continent in the world. But the biggest disadvantage is that people have always looked at Africa as a second-hand citizen or second-hand party. We need a new generation that is going to discuss with people, come up and talk with people on a basis where we just need to build partnerships whereby People look at Africa as just a continent that needs aid, a continent that needs to be helped, but rather a continent that needs partners that, are, that is going to work with in order to bring about the kind of changes that we need to see in Africa. Somalia is a nation without a state. There is no functional state in Somalia. And it's upon us as the African people to support our brothers in Somalia to ensure that they have a state within their nation. Today, terrorism is a global threat. I disagree with probably 90% of what you said. <laughs> um, so I think it is a good, a good chance for a debate. I think if we're to look back historically at, at the US involvement in Africa, it is not one uh, that I would characterize as neglect. It's not one that I would characterize um, as Africa being a recipient of you know, goodwill on the part of the US. In fact, I would argue the opposite, that the US has pursued policy after policy on the continent that is uh, essentially geared towards its own interests, and uh, the majority of those interests tend to be economic. And the reason I think we find is that um, AFRICOM and, and the government generally is most interested in pursuing, continuing to pursue access to resources on the continent. It's something that has been going on for years, and this is simply a formalization of that policy with a, you know, with a prettier face. So I think we have to be very um, critical in looking behind the very, very nice words that are used by both private, private foundations that claim to be um, working in the interests of poor people, as well as by our presidents, including President Obama. And Obama has really, in my opinion, fooled the world with his nice speeches. And the Ghana speech was a great example of that. It's not only a continuation of Bush-era policies as far as um, the war on terror is concerned, as far as extrajudicial killings and assassinations are concerned, which have in fact increased under Obama in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Um, and Obama has shown himself very, very much committed to AFRICOM, to the U.S. military command, and has in fact increased the budget for AFRICOM. What are reformers um, planning to do to um, in to either, will he be able to um, steal the election or will he win the popular support or do reformers have a chance in the coming election? The biggest dilemma in this is that as long as the president still has control of a parliament in the country, then we cannot have, we, cannot, we are not going to see real reforms, political reforms happening in the country. Um, in the announcement that we sent out, we said storm clouds over Uganda. Are there storm clouds over Uganda? Yeah, I think I would say yes. Um, and quite frankly, it worries me to, to think about what is in the future, um, especially in the lead up to the elections. There's a lot of suspense on a number of things. You know. How is Uganda going to react now with the new terrorist threats? Uh, the, uh, the new political dispensation that in 2011, how, what is going to be the reaction of the government? What do we expect? Do we expect to see changes with or without Museveni? I think to me, really, uh, the title of the invitation fits well into our discussion, unless to the contrary, proved. You know.